Hello, everybody. My name is Nicole Rosu, and I'm part of the product management team here at Conference Supply. I'd like to thank you for joining us for the Smart Building Seminar focused on the Eclipse Connected Controller Series by Just Tech Controls. We ask that all participants make sure that you are muted during this presentation, that we have limited interruptions, and that you please save your questions until the end. Thank you in advance for your participation. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenter from Dispatch Controls today, Christopher Ventenner. It's all yours, Chris. Hey, guys. Um, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, an exciting new solution in our product offering called the Eclipse uh, Solution for Small Connected Buildings. So if I can get my slide to turn over here, there we go. So first let's talk about the traditional expectations of a building management system. Um, so in a traditional BMS, um, you expect you know, a web-based user interface, some, some navigation, uh, definitely equipment graphics uh, for, your, for your plant, your, your terminal equipment like your RTUs and your VAVs, uh, maybe some overview graphics um, like floor plans, uh, dashboards, maybe some, maybe some grids or, or reports, uh, a centralized alarm console uh, so you can get visibility into system-wide alarms, um, email alarming so that you can get notifications when you're not on site, whether that be through email or SMS, uh, trending so you can look at historical data for all your points, and, um, scheduling obviously, and a centralized user management. You don't want to have to log into five pieces of equipment to, to view your whole site. You want to be able to go into a central location and manage your building. And that usually requires a certain set of equipment. So this is a typical architecture we see in, in a lot of our buildings for, for a typical BMS. Um, you know, on the top you have some sort of uh, PC uh, Windows or Linux. Uh, it could be a physical PC, a rack-mounted server, a vir virtual machine, uh, or even a solid-state industrial PC. Uh, you'll need a license for that uh, for supervisory software for ECNet, uh, and then a maintenance agreement for that, as well as uh, typically an EC boss is in the system used for um, field bus integration, uh, whether it's WAN or BACnet MSTP, um, Modbus, RTU. There you go. Um, service maintenance agreement for that boss and uh, as well as the field controllers required for control of, of all the equipment, both the plant equipment and the terminal equipment. It's related to that Aaron up there? Mm -hmm. Is that your, that it's related to it, Aaron? So um, along with the uh, responsibilities of that of those different pieces of the architecture in a traditional BMS, um, so the responsibilities are divided amongst those, tip, those pieces of equipment. So the supervisor, uh, that does your user interface, um, provides your navigation, your graphics, your overview graphics, uh, the historical data collection and the display of that data, alarms, uh, does your emailing, your scheduling, all your user management is done through that supervisor. Uh, it, it manages the network devices, those EC bosses that are out there, and basically has the central database and the, um, the data model of your system. And then the EC bosses uh, that are below those, those uh, network controllers, they're the gateway to your server. They also have a replica of that point database for whatever field controller system they're monitoring. Uh, and they push the data up to the supervisor. And then your field controllers uh, typically just ex execute the, the control of the system. So they're not doing any UI. They're not doing any network management. They're just doing the, the applications for whatever they're connected to. Uh, in small buildings, typically due to due, co due to cost or maybe just system requirements, we usually cut a lot of uh, a lot of parts of that that architecture out. So um, we go ahead and remove uh, that Windows server. We remove that supervisor and, and that and that uh, maintenance agreement. Maybe we'll keep an EC boss, especially if we have to ha have to integrate um, either LAN or, or MSTP or any kind of field bus um, that's not IP. Um, and then, of course, you have your field controllers to render control. So that architecture would typically look like this. Uh, your EC boss would, uh, would maintain all the function of your supervisor. So it does your navigation, your graphics, uh, historical data collection, alarms, email, scheduling, user management, uh, and it's the only real data model you have in the system. And then you still have your field controllers. Uh, the, the common alternative to this it would be that you would just eliminate the EC boss and you might have a network of field controllers that can talk to each other maybe share some data, maybe there's an air handler that, that shares data with uh, some VAVs and you have no visibility in the system at all. And that's also a common solution for a small building just due to cost, um, it, ha it happens quite often. 
So the Eclipse uh, solution for a small connected building uh, really only has one, uh, one layer of that architecture, and that's the field controllers. Uh, but the great thing about our solution is that we can deliver the expectations of a large system. So using only field controllers, um, we can do a web-based navigation uh, or user interface with navigation that's centralized. We can do your equipment graphics. We can do your summary graphics. We can do uh, the centralized alarm console with emailing, uh, trending, scheduling, and again, it's all in one uh, central location. So how does this system work? Uh, so it's, it's a distributed architecture. So each Eclipse controller handles its own, its own work, its own graphics, its own alarming, uh, and then one Eclipse controller does a little bit more. Um, so each controller does its, its equipment graphics, whether that's for a plant or a terminal piece of equipment, uh, it runs its own trends. Um, it's got alarms that it can uh, keep locally, but also push to an alarm recipient that would be one controller in the system. Uh, backnet scheduling. Every con Eclipse controller is a backnet uh, building controller, uh, BTL listing, so they can do trending, alarming, um, all, all, the, all the specifications of a building controller. Um, they manage the networks. If you have some field bus, our S1000 can uh, pull in some MSTP or Modbus devices, and our 303s can do some Modbus. Uh, and then, of course, they uh, execute the control for the program uh, that for, for the typical application, whether that's a VAV program or an RTU or a plan application. So how do we make all, make all this work? Well, it's a combination of uh, accumulation of the technologies that are in the Eclipse controller. Um, first of all, being a flat IP system, there's no need for uh, routing of field bus, right? Everything is... Uh, there's some opportunity to do that in certain situations, but in a pure Eclipse solution, uh, it's flat IP, wired and wireless. Uh, there's no need to manage um, field bus networks. Uh, because each controller has Envision graphics built into the controller, uh, they, can, they only need to have the points uh, for their local system in the controller, and they can display them locally in their own graphic. Uh, we added a feature called BACnet Discovery this year, which allows you to uh, for some of those points that you want uh, to hold in that, that main controller for, uh, let's say, a floor plan over it, overlay. Um, you can use our BACnet discovery tool to quickly discover remote devices and pull those points into that controller. Uh, the previous solution was to manually map every network variable based on its device ID and its object ID, uh, which was very tedious. Uh, single sign-on enables us to share a, uh, an access token with the controller, so once you um, authenticated with one controller in its database, you now have access to the whole system. Uh, so those distributed graphics don't feel like they're in different controllers. You can map them all into one uh, central web interface. And, and then again, like I mentioned in the previous slide, because um, the Eclipse controllers are so powerful and listed as BTL, listed as building controllers, they can um, handle trends, alarms. Uh, they've got four gigabytes of onboard memory between 400 and 1,000 megahertz uh, ARM processor in each one with an Android operating system. Uh, they're really, really powerful controllers for, for a terminal controller. Uh, the Eclipse uh, VAV box specification-wise lines up somewhere where the old uh, Boss 6 was as far, as far as hardware specs. So going back to that master controller we talked about, um, it's the one that handles, uh, create, creates the, um, the interface that makes everything feel like a single system, even though it's distributed. So your navigation lives in that one controller. Um, it pulls in some points you need for your overlay graphics. It um, displays those overlay graphics. It then pulls in the remote gra web graphics server from each controller embedded into the, into the interface for the remote devices. Um, you can have it report the alarms from the other controllers, so you can see not only the alarms in that web interface in the controller you're on, but also the alarms in the other controllers. Uh, and it can push those uh, alarm e uh, out those alarms out via email notification or uh, email to SMS, like any of our traditional systems have. Um, you can you only have to manage one user database, so your user database lives in that master controller, and it passes authentication throughout the system. Um, you can use it to uh, create a main schedule in the main controller and pass that information through. And if you need to pull in some BACnet or Modbus points uh, into that controller, you have that opportunity as well. Um, some of the basics of the system, the uh, one, only one Eclipse controller is con configured as a server per system. The 50 total controllers is the size of the system. So we're talking small commercial buildings, but still you could get, in, get into uh, maybe a small to medium. 
Um, so one master and 49 other controllers on the network. Um, and then each Eclipse controller has to have its own graphics. So you can use our preloaded applications that have their own graphics or you can create your own. So why would you want to do this? Well, um, it minimizes the hardware cost on a small, small building solution because uh, you have the opportunity to just use field controllers to deliver a full BMS. Uh, lower install cost over, uh, overall because um, we've got tools with the IP line like Express Network Utility that allow you to quickly discover and commission the controllers. Uh, we have pre-engineered and preloaded applications that match up with the graphics. So you have a, let's say, a VV box that you can configure with a couple check, couple different configuration options. The graphic automatically configures itself, and it's in the controller, and you can integrate it into this system. Uh, back in the discovery that we've added allows you to quickly discover the controllers into the central controller. And then additionally, um, we looked at that original first architecture showing a full building. Um, this small connected building solution can be uh, part of a larger um, solution. It could it can grow into an enterprise solution. There's still a, it's not a separate type of controller. There's still backnet controllers. They still talk backnet IP. They still can be integrated with ECnet. And keep in mind that the small building may not be a small building. It may be uh, an area in a building. It may be a tenant fin up. It may be um, uh, an existing um, uh, competitor site that that needs to just do a small replacement inside the building without having to take over and, and put in a whole enterprise system. It's it's definitely unlocks a lot of opportunities um, to, to get into sites that you couldn't typically get into uh, at this kind of uh, cost level. So if we're going to deploy a building, what kind of things do we need? Um, so 50 or less controllers, like I mentioned, ECGFX program, which is our free programming tool, and Google Chrome is our is our web browser that we support from the factory. It can work on other web, web browsers. I would just test it before, but Google Chrome is the one we test for. And then when you're deploying a job, we highly recommend um, that you have a DHCP router on hand. It could just be a small text, text, um, uh, text size router. It doesn't have to be an enterprise level router, but that way uh, all our controllers come out of the box um, as DHCP and you can commission them in DHCP mode and give them static, but it's a lot easier to have the server to do that. There's also software tools um, that you can put on a laptop that can do that as well. Nothing that Distech provides, but th there's things out there. Um, Express Network uh, Companion app, which is uh, an app that allows you to uh, scan with your cell phone. Uh, the, there's, a, there's a little QR code on all of our hookups controllers and you can scan that uh, QR code and it pulls in the MAC address, and you can assign um, the device name to that. So you scan RTU1, say RTU1 on your on your app. You can move on to RTU, scan RTU2, type it in on the app, and you can export that device list. So when you're commissioning, you know exactly uh, when you're assigning those static IP addresses to your controllers, uh, you know exactly which devices are which. And then Express Network Utility, uh, again, is, is the best way to go about um, commissioning a system. You do all your controllers for one location. Um, it's, it's, it makes the uh, deployment of a site uh, much faster than it would be if you just tried to hit each controller in a web browser one by one. Uh, the general workflow, install the controllers in the field, scan the QR codes, um, commission the network. So set up your network first. That's the easiest thing uh, to do. Typically, uh, I'll set up a static IP address for all my controllers. Express Network will allow you to um, to index them, uh, you know, with a starting address and an index number. And then you set up your SSO, SSO uh, server controller and set the others up as clients. Um, then you go into that main controller and you discover your network. So you pull in all the devices that you want to use in your small system and you add any points to those devices that you might want to use in a floor plan. It may only be two or three points. Um, then you configure uh, the remote devices to to push alarms with an alarm recipient if you do want to have uh, alarms from those remote devices into your central controller. Um, and then you go ahead and start building your graphics. And it's it's a mostly a drag and drop operation. And um, once that's done, uh, you can add your user accounts. Uh, you, you add the user accounts through the web interface of the main controller. Uh, you put the landing page where you want them to go and you're you're off and going. And, and really, um, you know, on small sites, um, Maybe you're looking at like a small box store with four or five or ten RTUs or uh, maybe a small office building with a couple RTUs and a boiler and a, and a handful of VAV boxes. 
I mean, this is something you can probably put together, especially with our preloaded applications, in maybe half a day and have the system completed, checked out, commissioned. So the end result, we get a single logon page for all your users, uh, floor plan overviews um, with uh, color gradients, thermographics for temperature, occupancy, uh, distributed equipment graphics for all your equipment. We've got history and trends and dashboards. So if you want to look at just basic trend logs or even set up report dashboards for trends that you want to look on a repeated basis. Uh, a central alarm console uh, and, and a central scheduling console. Well, we do appreciate your participation in this WebEx. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to your local conference supply. And we hope you enjoyed one of our many or will join one of our many smart building seminars. Please make sure you subscribe to our mailing list by visiting conferencesupply.com so you don't miss these future invitations. Thank you and have a nice day, everyone. Thank you.